You should have video, you should have audio. Say hello to the people, Daniel. Oh, hello, people. Um, I don't know if we are live yet. It's still, it's still counting down on the... Uh... Oh, really? It says we're live. Yeah. Oh, hello, here we go. Seems to, seems to all be happening now. Seems Four, three, two, one, and we're live. Hooray. Hurrah. There we go. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Uh, please let us know if you can hear us and see us clearly um, in terms of the level between mine and Dan's voices, because it's not always easy to tell. Um, no yes, doubt. Yes, we can see and hear. Thank you, Steve. You'll let us know. Hello, Steve. Uh, groovy. Right. All I want to know, Yeah, Dan. this is weird. Oh, yeah? Why is that, then? It's, well, it's Sunday. <laughs> I'm normally still drunk. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all good. All good. Great. Uh, Dan's a bit quiet, says Daniel Miller. Hello from Newbury, says Alan Bartlett. Good morning from Stockton, California. Uh, why did my vibe machine stop working, says Adam Beatman. Um, that was me. Sorry, Adam. Could be a... <laughs> could be a... Uh, power issue right voice mic's a bit low let's turn them up then keep speaking daniel uh yeah right i'm oh man i've ordered some um some merch from tom bukovac it should be here soon but in the meantime i've made i've made my own tom bukovac t-shirt but at the moment i'm wearing this got my ariel posen t-shirt on oh very nice you like that i like it yeah check that out i like it mikey i like it a lot Name the film. Um, uh, Weekend at Bernie's. Uh, Lost Boys. Um, Alien 2. I think it was the Lost Boys. Okay. Can you hear us now? Dan, you sound like you're in a box. Oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Says Sam Howlett. Right. The reason we're here um, is the Guitar Summit 2020. Guitar Summit is an event that happens in Mannheim in Germany each year, except it is happening in Mannheim, Germany, but not uh, in any sort of uh, public or real way. It's happening on the Internet because of dear old Covid. And they're very good people at Guitar Summit. And um, we desperately wanted to go this year. Couldn't go, obviously. So we're trying to offer some stuff via the dear old interweb. Um, yesterday, a video went live where Dan and I kind of did, um, what do we call it? Uh, seven, oh, the golden rules of gain. Six golden, <laughs> six golden rules of gain, which sort of was, sort of, it was sort of, it was quite specific, wasn't it? Hey, it was interesting, Dan. We've got a lot of yeah. output on the left and not a lot on the right. I'm not quite sure why that is. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to try and fix that. Uh, Jesse Yassatelis says good morning from a northern a north of Wisconsin love you guys hey Jesse thanks for joining us um, what's the guitar behind Dan Jazzmaster right this is uh, this is my grey grey's guitar skipper and it's a it's kind of a it's got Jazzmaster pickups a normal three position switch which I can understand, on a Jaguar style body um, made by Grace with his lovely roasted maple neck and every fingerboard. And yeah, it's, it's an amazing guitar. Um, mastery shenanigans going on down here. Uh, yes, I love it. So this has, that solves all my wants and needs for offset shenanigans. And I've been playing it all this week. It's been wonderful. Very hey, nice. doing, Mick? Yeah. You're right. I can't see you yet. No, I'm all right. I've, we've, for some reason, we're we're loud on the left and on the right. So I have literally no idea why that might be. But there we are. Okay. Those things. Hopefully, you can put up with it, humans. Yeah. Well, this is only going to be a short one today. Yeah. Let's just get um, into it. I'll stop worrying about all of that. Yeah. Uh, hello from Yosemite, California. Says Nick Stewart. Um, Volker Rach Racho says you're only audible in my right ear. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a problem. We've got a blinking problem, and I've got no idea what that problem is. <laughs> Hilarious, much hilariousness. 
Why would it be? Why would it be, Dan? He's off. Um, right. Hold on. I'm going to turn the audio off. And again, Dan? Okay, I'm going to try again? Yeah. All right. Right. Frame rate is super sharp. Thank you, Metal, metal Thrashing Matt. Um, good morning from Kansas, says Forged forged Iron. Oh, very nice. And Greg and Nutterwitz says, Hi, guys, from New Hampshire. Lovely. Oh, how lovely. Dennis Block says, Oh, sorry. Sean is Cubs fan. Shawnee is Cubs fan one. Uh, says, I'm also from Chicago. I've never been to Chicago. Uh, Chris Barrett, hi from Danbury, Connecticut, next order analog mic. Um, are you really next order analog mic? Because next order analog mic is a. Uh, oh, unless you mean next door his actual home residence. But analog band is next door is a little cafe. So if you're the guy that um, was serving us those lovely coffees while we were there, hello. Lovely to see you. Um, Caleb Home, hey, hey all, here from Wisconsin. Uh, John Prudhomme okay. says hi from Seattle. Brendan <laughs> Prendergast says good morning from Chicago. Have you fixed this, the uh, audio yet, Mick? I literally didn't do anything and it's fixed itself. Brilliant. There we go. So, That's uh, the power of the Mac. It's the, daddy, it's the daddy pig school of computer engineering. Have you turned it off and turned it back on again? There we go. <laughs> Uh, Jake Day says, Mick, when you've tried to fix it, it did something that worked, then it went hard left again. Yeah, I reckon it's a cable. You know what? It's always a cable, and I think it's a cable. Okay, great. So uh, anyway, we should be back on. Right, let's answer some questions. Who, darlings, has a question? We're not doing Super Chat today. Um, we're just going to we're gonna not do Super Chat for once. Because, um, you know, we love not making any money. That's brilliant. <laughs> Is anyone here from the Guitar Summit? Yeah, is anyone here actually from Guitar Summit? Um, Albus the, Band, the Aaron, from Guitar hello. Summit. Anyone here that says, I, okay, I've got this link. I don't know who these clowns are, but I'm going to click on this link um, and see what's going on. Is, is, does anyone here tick those boxes? I'm, I'm assuming not. <laughs> G Barge says, Mick, you pronounce Yosemite correctly. Want to be our president? <laughs> I think it qualifies me, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, um, oh, brilliant. Okay, I, I've got a question then. Okay. Uh, no, actually, I can't ask it because it's... Carl about... Durringer says, Woho from Swindon. Oh, no my way. goodness. Yo, Swindonia. Oh, man. Swin Vegas. Airplane mode. Do not disturb mode. Um... Uh, oh. Tier three. What's your weight. question, Mick? What's that? What's your question? I can't ask it because it was about Friday's that pedal show video, so it'll have to wait until tomorrow's live VCQ. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Ross. Ross has just said, "23 years in IT, and that is my number one first step. Turn it off and back on again." That's yeah. a that's a great thing from the IT crowd. Um, and uh, actually, interesting. Interestingly enough. Um, if anyone knows the IT crowd where they have guys, I, there's a few few shows and that that wouldn't be made today because it just it's not it's uh, yeah it wouldn't there's, there are so many un-PC things about it however um, there's yeah their, their whole thing was you know turn, turn it off turn it on again but um, ah uh one of the guys in the IT crowd is a fan of the show and we're going to get him on. He so is. Yeah. So there we go. Absolute 90. Sorry? Absolute 90. Absolute 90. Yes. Wonderful. Um, right. Rafsan Basher says, invite Andy Timmons. So Rafsan, we were going to do a tour with Andy Timmons in the UK uh, Andy Timmons is a very close personal friend of ours. He, Andy Timmons was the first guest we ever had on that pedal show. Yep. And we had like 12 subscribers. And Andy said, yeah, yeah, I'll go on. And uh, bless him. And he's one of our very, very dear friends. So he was going to come over and do a, a, a that pedal show live tour with us. 
like, you know, diff, I think it was five gigs we're going to do up and down the country. Obviously, um, the ones that is COVID hit, but as, as soon as we can, sorry, that was, a, that was a burp I was trying to stifle, didn't work out very well. As soon as we can, we're going to get Andy back over to the UK and we're going to get those gigs going because it'll just be awesome. Imagine playing on stage with Andy Timmons and um, Andy plays a solo and then he looks over at you and goes, your turn. Yeah. And I say, no, you go again. Son. No, no, I'm good. Yeah, you go again, man. Right, come oh, on. Oh, it's let's... broken. My my guitar's broken. It doesn't work anymore. Um, Let... Yes. Should we answer some questions, Dan? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, the first question is from Adam Beatman. Adam Beatman. Adam says, is there any functional difference between the black hole pedal and the black hole preset in the H9? Oh, I don't know. Okay, so a little thing about the H9. I'm actually going to start using it as a Swiss Army knife on my board. I've been going through getting my board together, and I'm really, I'm, I'm really interested in doing this wet dry stereo thing properly. But I'm going to use the H9 early on, like instead of a whammy and all those, you know, any bizarro noises that I want to get. However. I am not that familiar with it. Um, I can't imagine there would be a, gr a massive difference between because those the the plug-in things that they you know that H, uh, that Eventide put out are pretty fully functional. So I'd be very surprised if there was much difference. There might depending on um, yeah because I I don't know if there's going to be a difference audibly. I don't know the, the hardware, if the, if the hardware is the same. Um, but, yeah, I can't imagine the functionality-wise it's going to be much different at all. It's a good question. Otherwise, they would have called it something else. It's a good question. Black, yeah, blackest hole. Yeah, and I guess the next question is, well, if that's the case, why bother putting out the black hole? Ah, and I think... Uh, um, Henning, Henning Paul is on. He says, black hole, I would say no difference. Hey, Henning, hope you're doing well, bud. Hello, Henning. Still um, my favourite show we've ever done. <laughs> if you've never seen it, check oh, out. I hurt myself <laughs> filming that. I have never been the same since. If you've never seen it, check out our video with Henning Pauly on Tonewood. It's uh, enlightening. Um, yeah, so why bother putting out the black hole then if it's the same? And I think the answer is because quite a lot of guitar players, me included, just can't face the H9 for its um, user interface. I would never use something like that because it's just too complex. Um, whereas I would use something with knobs on the top that was easier to understand. And yeah. a lot of people find that really uh, hard to understand, but there are a lot of people out there like me. I know, having done lots of guitar media stuff over the years, there are a lot of people out there who just don't want to deal with endless menus and stuff. So Yeah. Right. Umu, Uma Doganoglu. Doganoglu, Uma Doganoglu says, a few days ago I bought a second-hand JHS Morning Glory version 4. Just mm -hmm. like in the video, the pedal has a huge microphonic noise uh, uh, problem. How do I get rid of this noise? So, just like in the video... Well, I'm assuming, did we have a problem with it in our video? I don't think we did. Uh, I don't think so. Microphonic uh, I've never noise. had a problem with a, with a Morning Glory. I mean, it's one of the most popular yeah. low-gain overdrives in the world. If there was a problem with it, it certainly wouldn't be that. Um, okay, the best thing you can do is just get hold of JHS. Yeah. They, those guys, are, their customer service is awesome. They they really stand behind what they do. Yeah. You know, it's amazing that they um, have time to put out silly videos like they did this week, Mick. I don't know if you've seen it. No. But it was proper hilarious. Was it? What was it about? They did a um, like a uh, a telethon, right? Like a like a, a JHS telethon where people phoned in. I was one of those people, and uh, Josh just got some some friends of his to phone in as if they're on a telethon. Anyway, it's proper funny. Um, him and Nick, they produce wonderful, wonderful stuff, and yeah, just. Uh, if anything that, that we do is funny, it's always accidentally funny. Those guys can just turn it on and just be <laughs> hilarious all the time. Um, to answer the question, Uma, um, 
go through a process of elimination. So one by one, eliminate all the other things. So is it a power problem? Is it one of your cables? Is it another pedal? Go through all of that. If it's still doing it after all of that, call up JHS and uh, they should be able to diagnose it for you. Yes. Uh, the Indie Game Dev. The Indie Game Dev says, are the Vinteras the best strap for a grand? I'm looking for that classic throaty out of phase, low output single coil strat sound. Uh, cheaper guitars with new pickups a better option um, I, if you're happy buying second hand guitars I would try and find a second hand American Vintage if you can um, but the prices on them are crazy at the moment so I do I think the Vintera is for, for my personal taste in strats is the best bang for buck uh, strat at the moment even better if you can find a road worn one um, but it's tough you know because the the cheaper the guitar, the lower the hit rate is for me personally. So it might be that you get one that doesn't suit your personal requirements. So one key requirement for me personally, not for everybody, is it needs to be lightweight. And quite a lot of the old road ones that I played were heavy, which isn't to my personal taste. It may well be to yours. Um, but yes, great. Failing that, a used classic series lacquer is a good shout, mm. um, which would be a little bit cheaper. And they're to that's totally a good chassis for upgrades in terms of pickups and, you know, hardware and stuff like that. So, yes, I would say Vintera <coughs> is a good shout. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Still, still haven't seen anyone here say hi i'm from guitar summit oh no they're on they are, are they on. yeah if you're on from guitar summit just say hello i'm from guitar summit i'd love to see yeah somebody was on metal thrashing okay. matt i have a 56 les paul special with really tiny original 50s frets what are the pros and cons of a refret okay i so if you, a video that we did a couple of years ago now uh, Nick and I got red and blue refretted um, by our very dear friend Johnny Kincaid in Bristol, who is the best guitar luthier I I know, and he's an absolute magician at repairs and refrets and things. So one thing that I noticed, I wanted to get big frets on red because I played a guitar once with big frets and loved it. The first thing I noticed, I noticed was it was the guitar got really bright with big frets on it. It's a big, massive deal, wasn't it? It was a, it was crazy, but then the other thing was, after all that, I I couldn't intonate the guitar yeah. at all. And then Mick says to me, "Oh yeah, I could have told you that." <laughs> like no. So <laughs> so I went back and got the sixty one oh fives put back on it, and there are just a thinner version. And what with the thinner frets, it's easier to intonate. Um, I'm getting. My 65, this guitar here, I'm getting this refretted um, and I will get like vintage spec thin frets put on this guitar because this guitar sounds great. I don't want to change anything. It just needs, the neck needs a little bit of work and the frets are a little bit um, off at an angle. Um, so I slip off with the high E string quite a lot. Um, so I'll get some new frets put on this. Um, but yeah, you, be really uh, considered about the frets that you're going to choose because it makes an absolutely colossal difference with the guitar. Yeah, playability-wise and, and tone-wise. So, yep. um, but yeah, yep. don't be don't be afraid of having a refret. You know, um, a, a good refret by someone who knows what they're doing can turn a guitar that you really are struggling with into something that's beautifully playable. Like my blue strap, for example, it just got to the point where I couldn't play it anymore. Refretted. Mm. There it was again. Happy day. So go for it, Matt. Mm. Um, I don't, it, if that 56 Les Paul special is an original 56 Les Paul special, um, obviously get it done by somebody who is yeah. used to working on decent vintage guitars. Please, 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 please. Um, I don't know where you are, but, uh, guitar experience in Q uh, in Hampton Wick is a good shout. Um, yeah. 
Anyway, right, let's move along. Stephen Mora says, best distortion for the song remains the same concert. Um, oh. So wasn't he using Marshalls and Oranges? I don't know. I'm I'm sorry to say. Um, so. I mean, obviously, I, I know Led Zepp's music canon semi-okay. Um, Got to be tone bender, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, you, to, a tone bender into a Marshall with a Les Paul is really hard to go wrong. Um, but so, so the weird thing is, right? If you, a tone, you right, think of that combination: Les Paul, tone bender, and Marshall. Um, and it's also the combination that uh, uh, David Bowie's guitar player, Mick Ronson. Mick Ronson used, but Mick Ronson also had a wire half cocked for a lot of the stuff. So, so yeah, a, a, a nice sounding vintage Marshall, Tone Bender and Les Paul. The thing to remember with that gig, and you know what, what you're hearing isn't what was happening on stage. Yeah, that's what so you're true. hearing is the sound going through you know, lovely old desks and mastered. And so that's, you know, this, it always ends up being a fruitless pursuit when you, you're you trying to emulate a recorded guitar tone. Yeah, yeah, You can get, now it doesn't mean that you can't take characteristics and, and you know, get, a, get that vibe going, um, but trying to nail a recorded guitar tone, you've got to use that gear, then record it and use the gear they use it used to record it but then if you're you know if you're if you're not the guy playing the guitar in the first place it doesn't matter what you do it's yeah. going to sound different it's... but saying all that a really nice loud open marshall tone bender and a really nice sounding les paul yeah it's a, it's it is the sound of ages it is it's a little bit depressing but i'm utterly convinced that a lot of those classic you know, the great classic rock guitar sounds are as much about volume as they are about gain and EQ and all of that because the dynamic response of the guitar at volume is just so fundamentally different than it is um, at low volume. So mm -hmm. the tone for me and for Dan, I know, is always, you know, we look at EQ, we look at gain, we look at compression, you know, the dynamic effects. Just as important as any of those things is volume. Yeah. Although... Eric Oh. Eric Phil Singer has said you're forgetting the Echoplex. Yes, indeed. So he did have an Echoplex yeah. uh, for, for his guitar and for the theremin, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah. Actually, the, Echo, the, the Echoplex is really significant, isn't it? Because that preamp mm -hmm. does colour everything. And if you, think, Absolutely. if you think about Plexi, I don't know, on the song Remains the Same, I don't know if he was like doing the Wem stuff and all of that by then, but let's, let's, let's assume that the classic Led Zepp sound is a Plexi. Um, it's a really visceral sounding amp. And uh, the Echoplex preamp will darken that off quite considerably. Yeah. Make it make it really nice. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, right. David Stanley. Hi, David. Um, he hey, says, David. What volume pedal should I use before effects for both guitar and lap steel passive pickups? If you... Okay, so two camps. You've got active volume pedals and passive volume pedals. If you're going to use a passive volume pedal, you need to make sure that it's um, that it is a high input impedance pedal. Now, even the thing the thing for me is though, even like with a one meg volume pedal, you <laughs> there is still a difference there. Um, it's really hard unless you're Okay, right. I won't get too pedantic. If you're going to use a passive volume pedal, which loads of people do and, and enjoy and it works fine, make sure it has a high input impedance. If you're going to use a buffered um, volume pedal, the best one I've ever heard is the Lale volume pedal. Uh, it sounds fantastic. Really great sweep on it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then just experiment where the volume pedal goes. Like, for example... You, if you want a volume pedal that goes in the front so that you can control the gain structure, 
i.e. the amount of signal that's going to your overdrive pedal. So when your overdrive pedal is on and you then bring the volume pedal back, it will clean up, all right? It'll reduce the signal going before clipping, so it'll clean up before it gets quieter. And, you know, there's, you know, Dunlop ones are, are, are fine. Um, there's, yeah, there's a bunch of them. All you really need to make sure is it's, you know, 500K minimum, I would say, if you're using passive pickups, absolute bare minimum. I've um, got, I have a question, Dan. Yeah. If you, if you are going to subject yourself to using a volume pedal, yeah. What about taking the volume out of the guitar? So that's okay. And that's a really great idea. What the what the difference that you've got there is the cable. Is the cable. So if yeah. you think of it as in terms of a circuit diagram, you've got the coil, inductance and impedance and that's hitting the resistance, mm. the resistance to ground of the of the pot and then after that you've got the capacitor now what you're doing if you're taking the volume out of the pedal and you're putting it after the lead you are swapping yeah. The, yeah. the order of the capacitance and the resistance and so the filtering is different yeah yeah that's basically 50s um, wiring isn't it yeah so yeah and now it will it will work because and uh, you know it, you have a really nice um Make, you know, if you've got a really nice uh, low impedance cable, um, that you know, it will work. It's just not quite the same as having the volumes on your guitar. However, it will work really well. You know, I think that's an, that's an experiment that we should do. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll be really happy to do that and just I, draw the circuit out. I'd show like, everyone what's going on. It would be really good to do it. It's in the meantime, David, do some research on whatever Robert Randolph uses. Um, what? Who else can I think of? Ben Harper, uh, and maybe Michael Landau. Research what yeah. they, there's. Uh, one pedal steel player, one lap steel player, and uh, for the for the next five minutes, the greatest guitar player who's ever lived. Um, uh, the, the, look what they use because they're three people. I don't know if the other two do use volume pedals, but Landau certainly does, and his tone is always exceptional. Yeah. Uh, right. Gareth Davis says, Massive thank you for helping me get back on the guitar after a decade away. You guys rock. You rock, Gareth. Now you've got thank back you, on the Gareth. guitar. That's very kind. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Jan Krakowiak, maybe, or it might be Krakowiak or Krakowiak. Anyway, Jan. Uh, it might even be Jan, but I think it's Jan. You've been a great inspiration for me. I even started to do my own pedals. Uh, I'm looking for warm vintage pickups for a Strat I'm building, but the catch is it'll have a Wenger body. Um, Wenger is, a for anyone who doesn't know, it's what Warwick bases were made out of for a long time. There were a lot of the early Warwick bases oh, wow, were, cool. were Wenger. Um, in fact, I think Boogie used to use it in their um, hardwood cabinets as well, would use Wenger. It's, it's kind of a it, I'm assuming it's an African hardwood. Looks a bit rosewoody. Uh, that sort of thing. Anyway, so warm strap pickups. Um, right, don't go for uh, enamel, plain enamel wire, an Alnico 5. Go for form var wire, an Alnico 2. Would be kind of warmer sounding uh, with, with a slightly different compression. Um, depends where you are in the world. I don't know where you are in the world. Um, it's really hard to look past Lolla pickups. Really is. I've never heard a set of Lolla pickups that didn't sound awesome. Yeah, I would also um, highly recommend the Chris Buck ID set. Now, yeah, they're great. You, um, from Radio Shop, they they might not seem like warm to you because of Chris's tone. Um, but they are lovely and because obviously for warmth you can eq it's better in my personal opinion it's always better to have the treble there and take it away a bit than not have enough and have to add it um so i would look at those uh it, it, there's so many great pickups out there so many fantastic pickups out there but start there start with lola start with radio shop um nothing wrong with fender pickups 
<laughs> Nothing wrong with vendor pickups. Um, no. Yeah, the creamery um, and cream tea. I mean, God, there's so many great pickups out there. Uh, good luck with that. I'd be I'd be super interested to hear what that guitar sounds like with that um, with the different bodywood. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Simon Goodship. Hi, Simon. He says, when is Kevin Shields coming on the show, Dan? Well, funnily enough, um, I don't I, I don't know. I have been in touch with his guitar tech and we're working on something. Um, it's been a while since I've heard from him, so I'll reach out. But yeah, it would be, we'd love to have Kevin on. How oh, amazing would that be? Be awesome. Obviously, COVID yeah. is scuppering most things at the moment, but it won't be forever. Dustin yeah. Thiessen says, hello, lads from Winnipeg. Hello to Winnipeg. Hey. And uh, all our friends there, um, including anyone called Landreth. Uh, uh, Mickey Settlemeyer says, or Settlemeyer says, how's Rosie today? Rosie's great. Thanks, Mickey. Uh, she's growing crazy. We, we get up every morning and her legs have got a bit longer. And um, she just gets a bit bigger and a bit more dog-like instead of puppy-like. But she's brilliant. Thank you for asking. She's amazing. Uh, Ramon Gomez Aponte. Ramon. Ramon Gomez Aponte says, "Do you know of a consultant for developing a new pedal design?" Uh, we know of a few, but probably not the kind of thing we give out publicly. Um, uh, it's really, it's really tricky. That yeah. Um. So when I first started looking for engineers um, for gig rig stuff, uh, I I tried to get get it going in Australia with a couple of engineers, and it never took off. Got to the UK in two thousand and two, and I contacted before before I um, yeah contacted about thirty engineers before. I found one that was on it, and, and you know, knew what I was, knew, knew what I was on about. It's re, it's a really tricky thing, and finding, yeah, it's engineers who can do audio and pedal stuff. They're a rare, not a rare breed, because any good engineer can do it as long as. Um, they understand small signal audio, small signal engineering. Um, and they don't start saying things to you like, it doesn't matter what capacity you use, they all sound the same. Yeah, yeah. We'll just buffer the input and everything will be fine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's tricky. And it, the thing is, it's as much about relationship as anything. Yeah. So you've got to, Yeah. They're probably relationships that you're going to have to dig out and and foster, Ramon, I would say, because for sure everyone I know who's in this business, um, it's about who you know and it's about networking, I mean, which is, of course, it's very difficult during COVID, um, mm. but th there are plenty of effects forums out there. There's plenty of... I think if you're serious and you've got a clear vision, uh, it won't take you long to find the right questions to ask to That's find, it. find That's the people. That's the thing, isn't it? It's yeah. having it's having a clear vision for it. Yeah, yeah. And so, being see, I guess one thing that um, okay, engineers, audio engineers, and pedal designers are really never lacking in ideas. There is, and I get asked quite a lot about, um, oh, I've got this, I've got this uh, idea for something. And I'm like, that's really great. You know, I really wish you all the best with it. There's, I am, I will never in my lifetime get all the ideas that I've got done, right? Um, and there is always space for new ideas and stuff. Ideas are not where this industry is uh, 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 not where that you struggle in production. It's, it's everything else. It's, um, you know, manufacturing and, and building a, um, you know, w having an idea and then you basically will it into existence. All right. And that's, 
that's awesome. So a quick, a quick story. That we've got, seven, we've got seven minutes left. All right. Um, when, I, when we first did Gig Rig, and this is, you know, I worked for four years nonstop. And then we had our first guitar show. And I thought I'd done the sums and worked out that if I, if I could sell, uh, I think it was uh, 250 um, uh, G2s that I could, no, uh, Pro 14s, that I could quit my day job. And so we went to the uh, guitar. It was a um, uh, big, big London guitar thing at Wembley. Um, and then we were there for that. It was a long weekend. We were there the whole long weekend. And you know how many we sold? We sold one. And that guy eventually asked for his money back uh, because it didn't, didn't end up going through with the order. So even though you might have the most amazing products, once you've got that, then you've got to be able to get people to understand the value of it and then build up um, and, you know, it's just all that stuff that comes with running a business. It's exactly the same thing for any business. Um, so but I don't, you know, I don't want to uh, put a damper on it for you. Not exactly the opposite. What I want to do is, uh, you know, I'd encourage you with it and just say, if you really have a vision for this, crack on and get it done. Um, just be aware there's a lot of stuff that in, involved in getting even a simple pedal to market. Yeah. There now. A lot of a lot of days where you wonder what the kids are going to eat. Oh man, I didn't make any money for ten years. Yeah, you know, I was doing this and playing every like every night of the week and a day job. To, you know, so yeah, ten years before I, I made any money from Gigri. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, right, uh, let's go for some quick fire ones, Dan. Because we've only got five minutes left. Clive okay. Clive McDade says, "What guitar related treats would be on your Christmas list uh, from Santa?" I want a Gibson SG. Ah, oh, that's a great shout. That's a really great shout. I tell you what, I want a I want an original pair of Fender. Um, uh, what do they call it? High range, the um, wide thin range line humbuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yep. what I would like. Cool. Um, hello from the toilet. Says Dusty Nuts for sale. <laughs> hello from the toilet. Hope that's going well for you. Um, yeah, just relax. It'll happen. David that Rustad. Was... David Rustad says, I have got the Chase Bliss Dark World and the Meris Mercury 7. Do I sell out to go CXM 1978? Ooh. Um, ah, I'm going to say, oh, God, I'm going to say yes. Just, I love both those pals. I've got both of those as well. And they're wonderful. I'm just trying to think if there's anything that those two give you that the CXM won't. No. The CXM is the best reverb pedal I've ever heard. It's it's astounding. So I'm going to say, yeah, go for it. Uh, right. Here's a question from Guitar Summit. It uh, doesn't say who it's from. Uh, what pedal would we recommend for Smashing Pumpkin Siamese Dreams Fuzz Sound? So what what was it? It was Big Muff, wasn't he, Billy? Op amp, an op amp Big Muff. Yeah, so an op amp Big Muff is what you need for that. Um, yeah. Uh, I would like to know what they think about the axe effects. If that does it for you, awesome. Yeah. Carry on. We think they're amazing. Great value for money, sound exceptional, uh, and um, uh, extremely versatile, portable, makes all the practical sense in the world. Uh, all of which are the reasons that Dan and I would never use one. Um, because we like doing things in a very difficult, old-fashioned, heavy, expensive and impractical way. Yeah, that was going to be the original title of the show. Yeah, but it was too and, long. Uh, so we just made long, it that so pedal show. Be, um, yeah, and that, that, <laughs> that pedal show, that's it. Hudson Lockett. Hi, Hudson. He says, or she says, uh, apologies, don't know, or they say, hey, guys. Any suggestions on making a roadmap for learning or practice? I don't have a guitar teacher at the moment and I'm not sure what to learn in what order. What a blooming great question. Yeah. Let's, we've got three minutes, Dan. So what are, your, what are your top tips for Hudson? Okay. Harmony, as in learn your chords, learn what makes up chords. If you, when you understand that, what makes up a chord and the chords function, 
uh, like for example, how the five chord wants to resolve to the one chord, how you can use the five chord to go anywhere. Um, and then you can relate that to melodic stuff. You know, technique and everything is really important, but understanding the mechanics of harmony is, is, is to understand the mechanics of music. Yeah. And that's when things get really interesting. So that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say two things. Set yourself a weekly target and do this every week. Uh, pick a song in your week period and make it a classic song, like a, a Beatles song or something that's really classic and doesn't have too many chords in. And by ear, sit there and work out what the root notes for the chord changes are. Yeah. Then try and work out what the chords are. And if you get really stuck, look up, look up the tab on YouTube and work it out from there. Mm. Secondly, there's such an amazing plethora of guitar tablature out there be yeah. it via on YouTube, be it in old guitar magazines, downloads from websites. Pick something short and learn it. Yep. A guitar solo, um, the theme tune from EastEnders. So learn something by ear, learn something by tab, something different every week. Do that and you'll be amazed how those two things start to mesh together over time where you will no longer need the tab. Yeah, great. There you go. Very good. Very good, Nick. Um, Very nice. Uh, right. Inti Rebodello says, Reboledo. Inti Reboledo says, Greetings from Amsterdam. Hello to Amsterdam. I have a question. What humbucker would you put in a Stratocaster Ultra HSS? Uh, thanks a lot. Um, depends what you want it to do. Dan and I are fans of old school pickups. Mr. Edward Van Halen, may he rest in peace, very famously put a pickup from a Gibson ES-335 uh, in his uh, original Frankenstein guitar, and it mm -hmm. sounded blooming great. So I'd go for an old PAF. Yep, agreed. Or something very similar. But of course, if you hit any manufacturer's website up, they'll try and entice you in with 15K and... Yeah, bibbly bobbly and magnets and yeah. So I'd 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 keep it classic. It's a Strat. Uh, try a try a Gibson PAF. Yeah, the reason the PAF is a really good shout is because the PAF has got wonderful top end, and that will work with the top end in the single coils. Um, so you'll still get a decent two position on the guitar. Um, yeah, give it a go. Uh, right, that's it. We're done, Dan. So one, cool. one final question from Joris Dirks. Joris Dirks says, Mick, you were never happy with the blue strap. Um, you mentioned quite a few times. How is it now? I did a whole series of vlogs, um, Joris, and I'm very happy with it now. Thank you. So check those out. Um, I mean, clearly it's never going to be an old one. One day I'll have an old one. But for now, it'll do. Good. Very good. Thanks Very for joining good. us. Thanks to the guys at Guitar Summit. I hope they've had a successful show. Um, check yeah. out there's some really great we stuff. I hope to get out to you, see you guys next year out there because, um, yes, I was out there once uh, with uh, when I was actually delivering Josh Scott's board, I think. Anyway, yes, it'd be great to get out to Germany and see everyone. Yeah, and um, if you haven't already, go to guitarsummit.de scroll down through the page and you'll see loads of great content um i'm looking forward to watching the one with andreas klopman very good all right um so i need to turn us off don't i dan i guess so Cheers, all right everyone and we will see you tomorrow back here at 5 p.m for our normal uh vcq bye have a great rest of your weekend see you later bye, bye.